Do you have a backup strategy? And if so, is it time to adjust it? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Rusty with Rusty Brown Photography. And today I wanna to talk a little bit about backups and maybe why you might have to change your backup strategy. I think I have to, and I'm gonna explain why. If we go back to, I believe, episode four from this channel, I was talking about workflow. And one of the particular challenges I have with my workflow, take a listen to this clip. So now let me tell you where I think I could probably do better in my workflow. I probably don't back up as often as uh, the industry would say you should. So I don't have a rigorous schedule where I'm doing it every week, every two weeks, every month. On average, it's probably once every three to four months or a long shot once every six months. One of the key factors in any backup regimen is what I like to call your keeper strategy. As a photographer, how many images do you keep? I mean really keep. I had a really good conversation with my son-in-law, Glenn, not too long ago, and we are at opposite ends of the spectrum with regards to keeper strategy. For example, let's say we both did a studio shoot and three hours or so we ended up with 1500 images so you're going to call those images down most people don't keep any more than 10 percent i'm probably closer to two or three but for the sake of this conversation let's say you kept 10 percent that's 150 that made your final cut of the 1500 glenn would immediately be deleting 1,350 images. He would not have to keep those anymore. He wouldn't want to, and he's only gonna work with those that made the cut. I, on the other hand, would continue to work with the same amount that made the cut, but I would keep all of those that didn't make the cut. Therefore, with my keeper strategy, I'm gonna end up with a lot more data to store somewhere than, than he is. Uh, I think the fact that he started off his photography journey with that strategy has been very helpful and keeps him on that track. Whereas I've always been taught, you know, from the very beginning, you know, keep all your originals, keep all your data. I still do that today, even beyond the ones that I actually work with in a final edit. So last year I realized that I was shooting more and my backups hadn't changed at all, so something had to give. When I talk about my current backup strategy, what we're really talking about is this. This is not the best way to do things. So let's just put some of these drives all over the desk. So the strategy was basically take as many of these backup plus four terabyte drives as possible and manually back things up to the point where I have four fours, uh, we've got a two there, and a couple of ones. Instead of increasing the backups, I had the bright idea that what I could do is increase my capacity here at the workstation. So in January, I went out, I exchanged my external drives for this desktop PC. So what did I do? I added two 8 terabyte external drives and one 5 terabyte. So that gave me a whopping 21 terabytes on top of the 3 terabytes that's internal. Now, disclaimer, I don't store anything on the internal drive. I just don't. I had a uh, laptop years ago that I don't know if the bus got fried, whatever, it just stopped working. So everything on the machine, I couldn't access it anymore. So I don't care how many terabytes I have, what size drive is on the internal, I never store files there. Programs, sure, fine, because I can always reload a program, download a program over again. But files for me, no matter what type of file it is, will always be on an external. Anyway, I knew I was shooting more, I was processing more, so instead of changing my backup discipline, I added more capacity. Like I said, 21 terabytes, right? So if we just look at the two 8 terabytes, right, that's, that's a total of 16. I noticed recently here in late September of 2021 that on one of the 8 terabytes, there's 5 terabytes free. On the other 8 terabyte, there's 3 terabytes free. So basically... I've used eight of the 16 terabytes from those two eights in about nine months. So mathematically speaking, it won't be very long before I either have to then take these eights up to tens or twelves or even more. Now I have a beast of a, of a desktop, but that's not the right way to do it. Keep throwing terabytes at the desktop. I have to change the backup strategy. With that, I'm going to finally move to a NAS system. 
Um, so I have that downstairs in the game room. Let's pop downstairs, do a quick unboxing. I'll tell you a little bit about it, and we'll come back up here and talk about it. So the NAS that I decided to go with, which is the network attached storage device, is called the Synology Disk Station 920 Plus. Uh, in the past few days, I've talked to several people. Um, talked to my boss, Mark. Talked to a coworker, Jeff. Uh, talked to Derek. Talked to Vern about various aspects of NAS and the things that I'm doing here that require a better backup system. But spending a lot of time really deep diving with Vern, I ended up selecting this version and he helped me understand what the what the 920 meant versus say the 418 that I was looking at before. So one of the things that I wanted to point out is that the package comes just like this from Synology. It has a nice little handle that you can carry it with and if you look closely enough your two MAC addresses and your serial number are right there on the box. Uh, now one thing to keep in mind, and I did get this notice from Amazon when I ordered from them, is if you order this device from them, make sure you're home when they deliver it because Amazon does not repackage it. It looks just like this when they drop it off at your residence or your business. So you can clearly see that it's a four bay drive and it's very easy and very portable to walk with. So you want to make sure you know it's coming because there's also no signature required. One of the toughest decisions that I had to make after talking to Vern was deciding what capacity, right, of, of internal hard drive to have from four terabytes up through eight terabytes uh, and how many to get. And I played the numbers games probably four or five hours between a high number of uh, lower capacity drives or a low number of higher capacity drives and at the end of the day, what I settled on was four six terabyte internals from Western Digital. That's what's in this box here. So this is a little bit heavier than this one actually. So this should have our drives in it. This actually has the Disk Station 920 Plus. Let's go ahead and open them up, see what we got, and then we'll go upstairs and talk about it. All right, here we go. So, with the Synology DS920 Plus, you can see it's got a nice footprint to it. It's very easy to use. As I showed downstairs, I had the four 6 terabyte drives. For the sake of time, I've already installed all four of those. They're pretty easy to install. You just pop out the actual drive that you want. It fits into, you, the sides pop off, it fits in, you lock it down. And the neat thing is, there are no screws. You don't need any screws at all to put it in it. So I've got all four in there. Slides back in like such. Lock down a piece of cake. If you look at it, I'm picking it. Now it's a little heavier than it was downstairs because uh, it's got four heavy drives in it. But you see USB 3 over here on the side. You got your indicators for what's going on with every bay going down that side. Um, on the back, you've got two Ethernet ports and another. USB 3 there as well. This is going to be the new backup strategy going forward. And if you remember from the episode that I did last year on frequency separation, uh, if you don't, I'll put a card to it right here. It, it's a great reference video. I mean, I, I think it's one of the best ones because it gives you step by step insight into how I do my editing and what my version of frequency separation is. But the key takeaway there is that. Uh, I don't flatten it out in the end. So if you take an average image for me, I'll have a layer for spot removal, a layer for, for skin tone, a layer for hair, a layer for environment. It's very possible that I could have four, five, sometimes six layers within, within the edit. Uh, and now I'm noticing that some of my images, the final TIFF itself, 
is coming in at about 1.5 to 1.7 gig one image. So if you think about it, I'm getting 42 megapixels raw right out of the camera. By the time I finish processing one image, it can be up to 1.7 gig. I wanted to give you an idea of, of, of what's on my system right now at the time that we're taping. I had to write this down. This is Check this out. My current Lightroom catalog today, just on the system today, 57,317 images. That's just this catalog. I have two or three other catalogs that I've already backed up that are no longer here that were in excess of 80 to 90,000 images. My current iTunes library on this machine, 1.4 terabytes. Songs, movies, whatever, that's a lot of data right here. I have a folder that I use for models when I shoot. That models folder is 900 gigabytes and it has 90 folders in it. It doesn't mean 90 models. Typically I have a, a folder and then a folder within. Two folders usually because one of the edits, one of the folders is for edits. In some cases maybe three. So you're probably looking at more like 40, 45 actual models. I have a my pics folder. Not the typical one that you see on a Windows machine that's on the C drive. I keep mine on the 5 terabyte external. On that external drive, the MyPix folder, which does not include any of the images that are in my Lightroom catalog, right? So none of the 57,000. The MyPix library is 1 terabyte by itself. I do um, production work, right? So podcasts, YouTube channels, etc. My 15 Good Minutes podcast has 1.3 terabytes in it right now on the desktop. My Have You Seen It podcast slash YouTube channel has 400 gigabytes right here on the desktop. My Kings of Coffee YouTube channel has 710 gigabytes on the desktop. And this particular channel here that I just started last year, Rusty Brown Photography YouTube, has 450 gigabytes and 254 folders right here on the desktop. So at the rate that I'm shooting and the type of content that I'm shooting, dictated that I should go to something like a NAS. Like we talked about a little bit earlier, the challenge for me was what capacity drive to get and how many to get. I settled on the sixes. I'm, I'm never going to say never, but I don't think I'll have to increase that. Right now with all those drives that I showed you before, I might have a total of seven, maybe eight terabytes of backup data. Now I have, you know, here, 24 terabytes available. I, I don't plan on using all of it even at my current rate of shooting. What I will be able to do is free up some space on those two eights and the five because I can actually start a really good backup regimen now. The other thing that I will be doing is using these still, right? So these don't go away. These are very handy, these external four terabytes from, from Seagate. Now I have the ability to selectively choose files, folders, whatever, and back them up from the Synology to one of the externals. These will now become my offsite storages. I've already got the desktop client for Synology. They have a ton of applications that you can use for your, for your, your backup system. It's, it's really more than a backup system. They have, they have applications on here to make this a server, uh, to do some virtual work, to be the, uh, it can become a media center, if you will. So it'll take all your media, pictures, video, etc., store them there. It does a lot of things with different websites if you want it to. But for me, I'm just going to use it as the primary backup system for Rusty Brown Photography going forward. So where does this guy go? So when we had the home built 15 years ago, I was trying to do some forward thinking about how many hard Ethernet drops I needed. So I uh, settled on five. There's one in this office, in this studio here, for all my Rusty Brown Photography Studio. There's one in Dee's office. There I have a second router connected for that entry level to the house, and it just basically is a daisy chain off my bigger router that's in the basement. Uh, I have an Ethernet drop off of the kitchen in the morning room, which is where my home office is for work. That's where I work there. There's an Ethernet drop in the game room that has the PlayStation 4 connected to it. So some really high-speed gaming going on there. And the fifth Ethernet drop is actually in what is the living room that nobody really uses here. 
So the plan is basically to put the Synology in the living room next to the piano. It will be on the network and from there we'll be good to go. So now the Synology is where it's going to be residing in the living room and it's connected. So I'll spend the next few days getting the right software applications that are going to be applicable for me. This will go out and it will find the Synology on my network. We'll start to configure it. So as I come up to speed and get the desktop apps that I need loaded here, I will begin the backups this week. And then once those are there and I've done the second backups, I will then begin to take some of the data off of the desktop drives and go from there. So with that, let me know what you guys think. I mean, this is an expensive option. I didn't talk about cost, but I will right now. The Synology device itself was $550. The drives on sale were $130. They were listed at $156. Um, so they were $130. The four terabytes, they were pretty good too at around $97. But I felt instead of having to upgrade in two or three years, just go ahead and get the sixes. So four of those sixes at $130 a piece plus $550 for the Synology itself. All in all, we're talking about $1,100 for that system. So you have to be sure that it's something that you're going to need going forward. There's nothing wrong with doing what I was doing before with the exception of making sure you, you do what you need to do and that's where I was failing. It takes a lot to manually back things up. You're always going to find something else you can do instead of that like I've done which means you don't do your backups as often as you should and that could be a problem. You know you're only as good as your data and if you lose your data you really can't get that back. So if you're still doing like I was doing up until now and you don't have that much media, rock on. But if you find yourself having 8, 9, 10 external drives that you keep in a shoebox and you have to manually go to your system to do backups, hopefully at least once a year, it might be time to look at a NAS. You don't have to get a 4-bay. You can get a 2-bay. You don't have to fill out every bay. You can get you know 1, 2, and then kind of move up as you go. Let me know what you do. Do you still back up the way that I used to back up? Do you already have an ass? Do you like it? Are you thinking about doing it? And if so, do you have any questions? If you haven't done so already, I would ask that you like and subscribe because that goes a long way to helping me bring this kind of good content to you on the channel. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy being here with you. I enjoy learning with you every step of the way. And I'm clearly going to be learning with this new way of doing backups. We will see you guys next time. Until then, be safe.